name is Theo Lapworth, and I'd like to talk to you about DBIX class, uh, or DBIC, since it's abbreviated to. Uh, I'm going to make a few assumptions. Um, I'm going to expect you to know a little bit about Perl, maybe even using some objects, um, a little bit about databases, specifically using foreign keys within databases, so having relationships set up. But what is DBIX class? It's an object relational mapper. And what that means is it allows you to convert objects into SQL and SQL back into objects. Um, even further than that, it means you don't have to write SQL, which is the real reason. Of it. So it's simple, it's powerful, complex, it's fabulous, and confusing all at the same time. Um, there are other ORMs out there. DBX class does have to be the best, uh, and in my personal opinion. So you might ask, well, why am I giving the talk in the first place? Um, well, hopefully to help you avoid some of the mistakes that I've made over the years we did, uh, help you learn it a bit faster than I did, um, and generally help, help you write your code quicker and easier. So I'll take you through a fairly simple setup. So a standard database example, we tend to have a table of books, uh, and then the author's table as well, because I believe books are written by authors. So, if we're going to look at the author's table, we're going to need to create a table. Uh, so we create, we call create table authors. Uh, the examples I'm giving here are MySQL. Uh, DBX class uses DBI under the hood, so it does talk to dozens and dozens of different types of database, so that's actually using MySQL here. So I create an ID, an individual uh, incrementer for each author, and I'm also going to give an author a name. Uh, and so I'll go up from the bottom. Um, a couple of things on this. I would suggest you always name your tables as plural. Uh, Matt Trapp, who wrote uh, the DIC, or the original work on it, uh, and I've been arguing back and forth, like I spoke about half an hour ago, he says he now agrees, and he's doing plural as the table. But the ultimate thing is actually you have to be consistent. So whether you're using plural or not, make sure you are consistent when you name your tables. And also, as a few of the other talks today have gone on about, internationalization, save yourself a huge amount of bother, start with UTF-8. So here, just point that out, so they're authors, and then you say we want either DB, because we want to use relationships, and also we want our character set for everything stored in there to be UTF-8. So that's the author's table, going on to the books table. Uh, we've got to create books. Again, we want an ID for each of our books. It's got an auto increment on it. A title for the book. And then we want to say, well, who's the author of this book? And that author is a foreign key going through to the author's table. So we're looking at the ID field in the author's table. So a couple of little tips on this. Um, I always make sure that the linking field, so this is the author, is the singular field. And always double check that the field that you're relating to and the field you're storing that key in are of the same type and the same size. So just to recap that, here's your author intake, which is the ID in the other in the author's table, and we set up that foreign key through to the other table. So looking very briefly at CRUD. CRUD, you hear a lot about when people talk about database operations, making a record, retrieving, updating, and releasing. So they're standard things that you have to do day in, day out. Now, the old version, the manual MySQL way, was to create a pair statement, and then you had to say, well, I'm going to insert into books this title, this author, and you wanted to use some placeholders, which helps stop that kind of rejection of that if you're dealing with the web. And then you give it a book title, and then you give it a book like author's ID, the author's ID. But the problem is at this point you have to know what the author's ID is. And I'll show you how we can solve that later on. Even if you want to then retrieve something out, we've got to do this select the field name, maybe you want to then join across to the author's name and get the author's name out, give that uh, field name to so, uh, give that an alias so, as author name from the books, adding in the web, or going off the join, or whatever it happens to be. And then when you come to actually retrieving that information, 
you have to go through that with then dealing with the data structure at this point. There's no clever objects, there's no introspection that we can do. It's literally just a hash ref of the information coming back. So we've got the books, title, and we've got the author name there. And then when you want to go and do manual update or something, again, you've got to know what that ID is, and you've got to create all of this and uh, make sure you've got the relationships set up correctly, etc. And then again, all of this typing messes you up and knowing what book ID I've got to, I want to delete. So DBX class really helps solve a lot of these things. <laughs> so in creating something, we use a book model, and I'll show you how to create models in a bit. So here we just say create something, we want the book object back, we give it a title, we give it an author, uh, I'm passing in the ID at the moment, again I'll show you how that can be simplified later. And that's it. No SQL. That goes and does the insert into your database for you. And you then have the book object returned to you. <laughs> A little tip at this point is don't pass in whatever your primary key is if it's an auto incrementer. Even if you're passing it in a dumb death for. As long as you don't pass it in, your book object will now have the ID field available to it. But if you pass it in, although the database is updated correctly, uh, your object won't have that information in <coughs> So this whole author ID thing, um, we can look at this from the other way. So let's say we're going to create an author. Uh, and then we're going to create a Pratchett author. So we're using our author model. Uh, we're going to create a name Terry Pratchett. And that's it. So that's inserted into the database. Uh, a record. We've now got this Pratchett object. We can then use that to create a related record. So the related record we want to create is only the books table. And we want to create a record with the title of you know, another one, I guess, well, what the book. Okay. Or in fact, DBI C gives you a method automatically. This add to books. So you can see here, I can either explicitly set which relationship I want to use through to books, or I've got a method there for me automatically to create that record. So let's have a look at the retrieving side of things. Um, there's lots of different ways you can access data after the database with BBIC. Um, a few of them. So if you know the ID already, maybe someone's filled it in from a drop-down form or something, you just go and fetch that individual record. Um, of course you can perform searches. So you can say, well, give me books where it's got a specific title. So you have to do a search and say, oh, a single record out of that. Or actually, maybe you're expecting to have multiple. So you might want to do well if it's a specific author. And you say, well, just fetch all of those. And then you end up with an array of book objects. Uh, you can also iterate over these things. So if you created the search, if you didn't call all on it, you'd get back a uh, result set object. And that allows you to iterate over it. So you can go for each record, looping over your results. You'll also notice here that the book title is now a method. And the book, you can access the author object of that book. And then on that object, call method. So you don't have to worry about aliasing and uh, tracking the structure of things. You've got the objects available to you for that relationship. Um, as I mentioned, you can um, perform searches and get the results set back. So you haven't actually executed the search yet. Because you haven't got the to all at the end, so we're getting a result set back. And searches take SQL abstract format. If you go and have the documentation for that, you can perform pretty much any complexity of search that you would like, whether it's betweens, ins, uh, relationships, etc., just by building up a data structure. An update is actually as simple as this. Once you've had your book object out of the database, you call an update on it and you pass it in the field you wish to update. In fact, you can actually set the fields individually, so I could have done book to title to something else and then just call an update, and it would have kept track of the fact that your book object was altered and therefore needs to be saved back to the database. 
And there's all sorts of other me methods for fetching information, so you can do a find or create, uh, insert or update. And a delete then is as simple as literally calling delete on your object. So not only does it delete it within Perl, it deletes it out of your data. So let me step back to show you those models, the schemas, and how we set those up. So you have to define here, we've got our bookstore schema results authors. We tell it in using the EBH class. Uh, we tell it uh, we're loading the core standard components, there's extras you can put into there. We tell it which table we're talking about and fields of those tables. So for each field, we tell it the data type, whether there's a full value, whether it's nullable, and the size of the field. We set the primary key down the bottom here. And also we tell it what the relationship is. So we say authors has many books. So that's the relationship that we've got set up. And that tells us that uh, we've got the books going through to the result books for that relationship. And it is our, it is the foreign table author that relates to our ID. So we're telling it how we're linking between those two tables. We of course have to go right down the other side. So this is then the book side of things. So that we've got the ID, the title, and we've got a date published, and we've got the author in here. And then we also say this author belongs to, sorry, this book belongs to a specific author. So we set that up. The problem with that is, well, it's just too much funding. We've had to do all that when we created our database schema. We've already told our database about all this information. And also, it's too much maintenance. You know, what happens if someone comes along and adds a new field to the database? We'd have to go and update our code as well. And we're a code program to it later. That's where Schema Loader comes in. So, what Schema Loader does is that will go and look at your database and then produce all of that code for you automatically. So, what I tend to do is I create a little script called Create Schema. Uh, we tell it we are uh, going to use the Ebags class schema loader and we want to use a specific method make schema at. So at the top of this database name, username, and password. So make schema at, you tell it which namespace you want to use. So we want to use the namespace bookstore schema. Um, we very specifically want to make it use namespaces. Uh, and that splits out the, uh, the way we set up the modules, and I'll show you that in a second. You then tell it where you want to dump all of this out to. So I'm just saying, well, the credit directory called link and dump it out of there. And then you just do your connection to the database at the bottom there. So the namespace splits the logic very cleanly. We end up with bookstore schema result x. So whether x is the books or the authors. And that's really an individual row and the other information, so that's the which table, the connection information, uh, sorry, and then the field information. And then result set x, which is about searches and results. Uh, DBX class does allow you to squish all of this into one file, but splitting it out keeps you safe. So running the script, create schema. Um, we can then have a look at what it's created. So create the lib directory. In there we've got a uh, bookstore directory. In there we've got schema.pm at the bottom. And we've also got results, authors, and results books. So the first thing I'm then going to do is I automatically make the results set directory as well. So I know I'm ready to go for everything else. If we go have a look at the bookstore schema.pm, this is what's been kicked out. The only thing you need to do with this is to actually specify how to connect to the database. So you see at the top of these two lines created by the EMAX schema loader, do not modify it. And it's serious, don't modify it. The reason is that if you do make an alteration to your database and you then rerun that script, it will only change things above those lines. So if you want to make any customizations, you do it below those lines. Um, I would point out if anyone has to use Perl Tidy, that does do weird things with this. So on these files, and these files only, then use Perl Tidy. So as I said, this line here, you connect it. 
And we do need to edit it because we need to tell it the database information. Um, so again, back to what database and how to make that connection. But you set that up in this one location, and then you don't need to keep doing that all over the rest of your code. Um, so how do we actually use this? Um, using the schema. So something like this at the top. We're going to say use bookstore schema. Then we want uh, to get the author model. So I'm going to say find bookstore schema to result set and I want the author's result set. So once I've got that model, I can then call my uh, creates on it. Um, I can also then add to books and do the next steps in whatever I have to be doing when I modify the database. So running this code, um, I should have created an author, double seven, and I should have added a book with title 42 and the date published being now. So if I go back into my database, if I do a select star from authors, that tells me that it's done that, you can see it's automatically adding in the ID. And here, when we look at from books, I can see at the end there, the author ID is one. So it's automatically worked out that relationship before. There's a great environment variable called dbi trace equals one. So if you run that, and if you put that in front and then run your script, you'll see what database statements are actually being formed. So for example, if I actually I ran that on the script I've just done there, I get to see that it's actually written out this SQL for me, saying insert here with these values, uh, can you track your author, all that sort of thing. So that's very simplistic updating of the fields that already exist. But you can extend the index class uh, results and result sets to add a lot more functionality. And this is where our overloading comes in. So if we go and have a look at books, well, let's say from a book title you can go and get to ISBN. Now, you don't want to have to go and create extra models, extra objects to represent the book. You've already got one that's your database value. So why not just extend that? So here we're in our results set books. We're using our base PBS class, so all this stuff's already been written for us. We then see those two lines do not modify to so find them, ignore everything above. We're going to add this new method called ISBN. We put in self, which is our own object, so we know that we've already got uh, self to title here. And we can go and pull that off of Amazon or however we want to fetch that data, and then return that information. So now, on a book object, I've got this ISBN method that's available on any book object at the database. You can do other clever things as well. So, you can actually specify that you want to inflate a column. So, date published in MySQL is stored as a date time string. Um, well, I like dealing with date time objects. I don't want to have to remember to always convert myself. I want to say, well, I want to use date time objects because they've been time zones and all sorts of other things. So what I can say is that, well, actually, here, when you are inflating, so when you're fetching something out of the database and returning it, I want you to inflate it using date time format minus the bar state, so I get a date time object back. Equally, when I'm going to update this object, I want to pass in a date time object. So I want you to be able to deflate. So here you just call year, month, day on the date time object, and that will then return the format that the database wants. So what this now lets us do is we can do things like setting the date published. Uh, we can give it a date time object. So the date actually it was republished. I want to update that. So you just pass in date time now um, and call that date. And that will take the database and update it with whatever the, whatever now is. And of course, you've got the reverse of that. So if we get uh, the date published out, that is a date time object. So I can call month abbreviation on it, and I get December. So that's on the individual rows. We can then look at the result sets. So these are searches, basically. So I can add it to things in here. We can see it's result set books. Uh, and this is a, the base class we're using is result set, the US class result set. And we're going to add this, the ultimate books. And of course, the ultimate books must have 42 in the title. 
So what we do is we say, well, taking whatever's coming in, taking our, 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 our object, we can then return the search with a title that is like 42. The interesting bit you should notice is that I'm not doing an order, I'm not doing a fetch. This is actually just adding on to my requirements. So what I can then also do a by author and say, well, you know, pass in an author object here, and on the author object, I'm going to get the ID out of it. So suddenly I've got these little methods available to me. So we can then do things like using our uh, bookstore schema, we get the result set books, so we get our books model. And I can say, well, give me the result set for the book model, the ultimate books. And then when I do result set to all, that's actually the point that it executes and fetches all of those books for me. What gets really sexy is when you start chaining these things together. So now I can call search and get my author here, but then I can go down to the book model and say, well, I want the ultimate books, but then I'll buy a specific author and I can pass the author object in. So, you can take this as far as you like. You can say, well, I want the ultimate books uh, by a specific author, um, or the ultimate books, um, and then you can do by author as a separate step on that, if you need to break it out and do some calculations in between. And when you debug the SQL, you get that information out as, you, as you'd expect, um, fetching that information. So you can really take this extremely far. You can say, well, I want a category by this children's books, fire specific, also published after this date, the first page containing once upon a, uh, a greater rating, and then you can fetch all of that. So this chaining means that your Perl code itself ends up with very readable set of statements of what you're trying to do. So, some other things. Um, you can actually overload before you even insert into a database record. So if you want to do some messing around with the attributes before that happens, if you want to put an overload on a delete statement or an update, you can mess around with all that sort of thing as well. We need to come on to relationships. Um, well, what happens when you've got multiple authors? You know, sometimes people work together. So that starts looking like this. Um, we need a joint table in the middle with authors and books, um, and then we've got our relationships between all of that. First, so asking a few relationships here. Well, take you through that quickly. Um, we've got an authors and books table. So we'll get rid of the foreign key out of books from the authors, and we add in this new table. Um, the real key bits here being that the foreign key for book goes through to the books table, the foreign key for authors goes through the authors table. Now, on that, we then have this has many relationships, so books has many of these, this join. Um, well, in our results, books, um, this has many books like this. Um, and that's also generated by the schema loader. So all I had to do, once I had it in that new table, cleaned up the database, was rerun that code. Um, and what that said is, look, you know, here's the author of books, that's the name of the accessor. It's related class, so how it's joining through, and then what the relationship is. Um, you need the other side of that, going from the authors and books back to the books table. Um, so again, this is automatically generated for you. And of course, you then need the other side of that, look at the um, of books. Um, so it's the same for the author side of things. So with no code, just rerunning that script, having you pull to the table, that's all we've done for me. So the only bit I actually need to worry about is this many-to-many -many relationship. So I need to go into the books, and I need to say, look, I'm creating a many-to-many, so -many, package many-to-many, -many, and I tell it the accessor name is authors, so books to authors, um, what relationship I'm joining through, and yeah, it's the authors and books relationship that was set up for me in the automated uh, event class. Sorry, make schema, uh, and then the name of that relationship. So this little bit isn't automatically generated, and of course you then have to have to add it on at the other end as well. Now using that 
is very simple, it's the same. The only difference being is that if you then start looking at um, the debug, when you call add to books, it's doing all of these multiple inserts and managing that data for you. So you can call add to books uh, on an author and pass it in a book. Um, so maybe it's one author, you want to add another, you can do it that way. Um, or you can call add to authors um, on a specific book. So with 16 lines of code, that we've had to write, quite a I know, but that's managed all of this system. Now with you guys class, um, if you get errors, read them very closely, the number of times I've got stuck or one of my colleagues has got stuck, and actually it's just because we've not read the errors can be enough. Um, they are quite verbose sometimes, um, if that thing is really just stop and have a read of things telling you what the error is, you just got to pick it out. Um, so with errors, turn on your debugging, um, read your error messages, uh, check the field names, uh, check the package names as well, and also check which database you're connecting to. Obviously, I would never do this, but connecting to your test database is going to be alive or vice versa. Um, I think we've got a couple of minutes for a few bonus slides. Um, you can pass your result sets into template toolkit, so if you have to use that for a templating engine of choice. Um, but because template toolkit tends to work with list context, you can't just do author to books because it will get confused. So if you put in that RS, it automatic, that's automatically being created for you. So that means that you're always dealing with the result set object and then you can call the count method on that. Um, Catalyst is a pretty popular web framework. Um, this allows you to plug models uh, directly into Catalyst and you can plug DBIC directly in. So here we can create a, uh, whatever your app is, model bookstore, and then we can say that this is going to be a Catalyst model of DBIC schema, and then all you do is say, look, the schema class is that one over there that you've already built. So when you wanted to use that from within Catalyst, oops, sorry, uh, so this allows you to keep it separate from Catalyst, because you want to run the conscripts or whatever else it is, um, but then when you want to access it from within Catalyst, all you have to do is in your method, um, you call C to model, and say I just want the bookstore model out here, please, and then you can do whatever it is you need to from that. Oh, right.